Oh, the new um, Gideon, sweet. Yeah, so it looks like they are in the middle of game three. Both of these players are 4-0. Let's see where they're at. It looks like Josh Cho has three lands, two planes, two godless shrines, and four tokens on the and battlefield. And there's one of those pyroclasms. And Thomas Phillips is just using that pyroclasm to clean up the board. He does have, looks like, two towers, a grove of the burned willows, and a forest. So this match plays out a kind of similarly to the one that we last saw, where the affinity player was the aggressor against the green-red Tron deck, and the Tron deck was trying to stabilize. Josh is going to be the aggressor against Thomas here, and Thomas is going to be just looking to stabilize. So it looks like Josh does have a familiar mage in his graveyard, uh, and Thomas did have another Urza land in his graveyard, so he was able to set him off man a little bit. Yeah. Josh is going to path to exile one of his tokens in response to that Pyroclasm, leading me to believe that he might have a Gideon or a Soren of four mana Planeswalker in his hand. That he wants to guarantee landing on the battlefield next turn. Yeah, that seems likely. I mean, Josh really needs to have pressure. And while he would like to save that path to exile as a way to deal with something like a Worm Coil Engine, he knows that Thomas is a little ways off from Worm Coil Engine because his only two Tron, Tron pieces are the same type. And he has that four mana Planeswalker, just like you were alluding to. Looks like we've got a Gideon ally of Zendikar. He's going to start pumping out some 2-2s. Two uh, I can imagine that what we're going to see next turn, because it looked like Josh had another Lingering Souls in his hand, is that he's going to make Gideon a 5-5 five five so that he can attack and play Lingering Souls. And then the next turn, he can minus Gideon and get an Emblem and crash for a whole bunch. Wow, that sounds like a great line of play. Have you played this deck before? Never. Never? Wow, you're really good at magic then. See stuff like that. I mean... I wouldn't say I'm real good. <laughs> I just read enough Jerry Thompson articles on StarCityGames.com. Oh, mm. So let's see what uh, Thomas can mount. Josh has got a pretty good card on the board in that Planeswalker, and Thomas doesn't really have a good way to deal with it, so he needs to answer back with his own Planeswalker or Warm Coil Engine or something of the kind. So, yeah, so it looks like we've got a popped uh, Chromatic Star. We've got an... A Stirring Wildwood a, being cast. A Stirring... An ancient stirring. Ancient stirring swoops. It's just going to find an expedition map. Now that's going to help him help get him closer to Tron, but that's uh, I mean, it's not really going to do much against this Gideon. Yeah, it almost seems like he would want to get something like Eye of Ugin so that he can search for some real action, but he just doesn't really have the mana to make use of that even. But yep, looks like the familiar mage is just put a little work on him. Yeah, he doesn't have that much going on. I mean, he's kind of playing fair magic. I mean, this is turn five, and he only has five mana available. So that's really not why you would want to play a green-red Tron deck. Absolutely. But he is able to find another Tron piece here. If he does happen to have some action in his hand and can find another Tron piece next turn, then you could be off to the races. But let's see what Joshua Cho is able to put together. After Thomas Phillips just searches out a power plant, he's going to cast a Chromatic Star and then ship it back to Joshua Cho. Yeah, and to note, because Thomas's deck is a little more old school and has the Emrakul, he can be in a really, really bad situation. If, but if he hits 15 mana and he gets that Emrakul, he gets the extra turn, he gets the Annihilator trigger, he gets to untap, do some new stuff. And so Thomas can actually fall pretty far behind and still have outs to battle back. So it'll be, it should be pretty exciting to see how this goes. Because right now Josh is definitely ahead, and he's getting farther ahead, and Thomas is getting into a spot where he needs to do something quick. So it looks like we've got here, Josh has just plussed his Gideon, made it a 5-5, crashed in for 7, and knocked Thomas down to 9. Cast a Lingering Souls, put a uh, Shambling Vent onto the battlefield, tapped, and just passed the turn saying, all right, man, see what you got. I got a lot of damage coming next turn. Yeah, does I believe Josh just has lethal if Thomas doesn't do something serious here. Correct. So it looks like Thomas is going to start out with a Nature's Claim on his own Chromatic Star. Gain so, four life draw card. Yep. That's not, not too shabby. Yeah, not too bad. Not, not too great either, though. <laughs> yeah. And he's just going to pass the turn back. So this... So what could he be representing? Uh, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Yeah. Maybe a Rending Volley? Is he a Rending Volley in his deck? I don't know if that's going to do much. He's, no. I imagine what we could see here from Josh oh, is... Oh, he has Rending Volley. I imagine what we could see here from Josh is just an activation of that Shambling Vent, plus in his Gideon and crashing with everybody. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. That put Thomas to 2. And then he would be dead to the Shambling Vent, even if he weren't able to clear the board. He also could just make an Emblem. 
crash for three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, put Thomas to three. And one of the things that's unique about what Josh's deck is doing, as opposed to the Affinity one that we watched last turn, the Affinity deck, it's primarily all creatures, but the fact that Josh has uh, tokens, Planeswalkers, and Manlands, he's got a really big spread, so it's a lot harder for his deck to get hit by something like a Pyroclasm. Yes, threats are quite diverse. Yeah, and a lot of them are individually good. We saw in the last match, you know, uh, the Tron player just took care of Arcbound Ravager, and then uh, in a lot of ways the draw fell apart, but Josh, a lot of his guards are just kind of good on their own. So even if you answer one or two of them, he's still going to have stuff in reserves that will be impactful. So it looks like Josh is just going to activate his Shambling Vent plus the Gideon, turn it into a 5-5 five -five and just crash with the team. This and is the going to put Thomas down to two. Josh is going to gain two life, and at this point, I don't really think there's much that Thomas could potentially have that could stop this from happening. Yeah, Thomas is in a, a tough spot. He's got to draw something really good here. He had all of this mana last turn, wasn't able to do anything with it, and Josh has consistently been able to use all of his mana to put power and toughness on the board and attack with it. And this was all set up by Josh, Path to Exile and his own creature, to guarantee that he could cast that Gideon ally of Zendikar yep. on that following turn. So we got a, a fetch from Joshua Cho, a uh, flashback of the Lingering Souls, and passing back to Thomas, and he just has way more than lethal on the battlefield. And let's see if Thomas can scrape something together to pull himself out of this. Yeah, it's tough because not even a Pyroclasm would really be good enough here. He could be able to wipe away some of the board. Another thing is that uh, Worm Coil Engine wouldn't be good either because the tokens fly. Yep, we've got flyers. Plus, I think he could even... One, two, three, four, five, six. He, he could even attack for enough to kill him through a Wormcore Engine. Yeah. <laughs> now, if Thomas has the extra Tron piece, he could potentially cast Pyroclasm and Wormcoil Engine. But if he could have done that, I think he would have done it already. I agree. So it looks like we've got a, an Expedition map out of Thomas. Which is not the start of a comeback, unfortunately. No, it is not. But we'll see what he can do. Let's see, we're going to pop the Expedition map. So he's going to complete Tron. And this is going to give him six mana, so he'll, he'll probably be able to cast something like a Worm Coil Engine, maybe. But again, he's still just dead to what's on board, unfortunately. Well, he's got to play it out, you know. Yeah. We're going to make Josh attack. He might forget. Sometimes they have six, right? Sometimes. Well, Tron has been assembled. It's a little late. Here's a Worm Coil Engine. Yeah. And so this is exactly what I mean. The... The green-red Tron deck, it just played too fair this turn, and when you're just playing fair, the Worm Coil Engine is just too slow. Josh has too much stuff. And that's game. Josh swings in the air, yep, takes the match, and good for Josh. Yeah, we're going to see him make an emblem there and attack in for Lethal at 8, putting Joshua Cho all the way up to 5-0 and with his Black-White Tokens deck. On a roll. Yeah, Thomas Phillips is going to drop down to 4-1 four and one with green-red Tron. Still going to be in a good place to try and day two of the tournament. He still has, you know, at least a loss to give today. Uh, he just got to rattle off a few in a row. For sure. And I mean, that draw seemed a little a little bad for Thomas, but given the cards that he had, I think he played it really well. Yeah, it looks like that full mirror, a full mirror mage from Josh just set him back a little too far, and he was able to lean on that advantage when his lands didn't line up correctly. Yeah, and a lot of times with these 